All right, this is the meeting of governance, organization, and legislation. I am calling the meeting to order at 10.36 a.m. We have just barely a quorum, um, and we also have Councillor Shane with us today. Uh, the first thing I want to do, just really quick, um, since it's been something we keep sort of kicking the can down the road, is agenda item two, which is continue follow-up on town committee charge update request. So in our packet, we have this committee spreadsheet that George put together for us. Um, and we haven't, we've had it for a couple meetings now, I think, but we haven't really had a chance to talk at all about it. Uh, so I'd like to give George an opportunity to sort of speak to what he put together here. Do you want, do you want to <laughs> Do I want to speak to it? Um, it is simply right now just a list of um, committees that I assume at some point we will um, talk about going to and requesting updates on their charges. I think right now it's just a, uh, a list for us to uh, begin uh, our discussion. I think the, the real discussion is what are we going to do with this list? Uh, you know, uh, what's, what's our, our plan of action? Um, and I don't know, with only three of us here, um, whether it's going to be very productive. Uh, I think some of those who are not here today have some strong feelings about this. Um, but I might be wrong. Um, but essentially what you have is just a, a, a list of committees um, and with a little bit of information about when they were created, et cetera. Um, but beyond that, um, the real question, it seems to me, is um, what, what, what do we really want to accomplish? How are we going to approach uh, these committees? Are we going to approach all of them? Um, I think what we had agreed upon originally was this would be um, we would be dealing with committees that are five years and older. Is, my, is that correct? Correct. And um, we could just uh, send some kind of generic message to the chairs of every single one uh, that fit that description and uh, asking them, um, having you read upon what we want to say, asking them to uh, consider. But we cannot compel them, all right? This is simply a request. Uh, I learned that, I guess, a number of months ago to my, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that we don't have any authority here at all, it seems. Though it does seem like we do have a, resp I guess we have a responsibility, I think, personally, to sort of um, think about these things and to, and to the degree that we can, um, uh, pay attention to the health um, and uh, status of committees. And I know some have mentioned the idea of, of maybe some could be, uh, uh, some might have reached the end of their natural lives. Um, some perhaps could be consolidated. Um, and it's not clear to whom that task falls. And it felt to me personally that it, it could reasonably fall to us um, with a clear understanding of the limits of our authority. We're not going in and telling people what to do. Um, mm -hmm. And so that may mean that we'll, we'll be utterly ineffective. <laughs> People can just ignore us. Um, but um, so that's my dim recollection of the background. Um, and so what I, I was asked to do was simply create a, a document that, um, and I'm not sure it's complete, so one of the tasks people might want to do at some point is, is look this over and make sure that I haven't missed anything. I probably have. Um, but um, to create a document that lists the, uh, the, the committees that would, um, we would like to request um, a um, update or a review of their charge. Uh, and I think we as a group would have to decide how to word that and do we want to do all at once, do we want to do them in stages, um, and I think probably that discussion would be better served with all of us present. Okay, so my understanding is, there, so there's 27 committees here? I believe so, yeah. And these are all committees that you feel fall within the timeline that we had set out more or less, yes. right? Some of these were created in 2015, so aren't quite five years old. Exactly, right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I only have 12. Uh, there's two tabs. There's two so tabs. these are town manager sorry, created, and then there was select uh, board yeah, I, created. Sorry, I divided them into two. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, all right, so the key questions that we have before us then are which committees we want to reach out to. Do we want to reach out to all of these committees or not? Uh, who does that? Do we want to do it all at once or in stages? And what exactly are we asking of these committees? And, and George's suggestion is that's a, a better conversation for the full committee. Um, 
but we should just clarify those are the questions we're looking at. Because I think one of my other questions was for those committees that have been revised more recently, uh, such as the Kanagasaki Sister City Committee or the Amherst Local Historic District, created more than five years ago but revised fairly recently, are we count how are we counting that? Mm -hmm. I have actually no thoughts on it at the moment. Um, I think one issue is just the number of committees, the size of the task, um, that we as a group need to be clear on, on a time frame. We, we're looking at for over the next year, we're asking them to do this, um, and we also have to consider our own workload. Um, uh, whether we want to do it in, in, in groups or it might make sense to do it all at once and just send it out and see what response we get back. Um, it, it may be none. It may be 27. Um, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. It also sounds to me we might, you know, we might want to create a priority list. Um, it, the, Cog uh, the sister city committee uh, is, a, I think that I would like to look at at some point, but it's not as high a priority for me right now as some of the other committees. So if we even just listed priority, that might be a good thing. And if a committee is extremely active, like I know, you know, maybe they actually get a lower priority um, because they are busy. Because they're busy and they're uh, functioning well, it seems like in most instances. I'm not sure. Okay. I hate to add work to a committee that's function. You know, that's really going. Right. Going crazy. Sure. The logic behind this, as I understand it, is just it would be healthy for um, any body that's been in existence for five years or more to sit down and just spend a little bit of time thinking about uh, what they're doing and compare that to their charge. Um, I, I hear Evan's point about charges that have been revised recently and that might be a good way to maybe eliminate some. Um, but the thought that I uh, had was that this would be a healthy thing to do. Um, it's optional, we can't compel it, and it's not clear who would do this if we didn't. Um, I mean, the council could say they just don't want us to do it. Just you know, it's not our job. Forget it. Let it go. But um, until I hear that, um, it feels like this is something that would be appropriate for us to do. Right. Uh, and then it's just a question of how to manage it, and also what it's exactly we're asking of these. Uh, I, mean, I assume committee chairs. We're going to reach out to them. I agree with those things. Okay. You know, I think we should. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not opposed to doing it. I'm just trying to brainstorm different ways to make, to organize the list. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then for us to figure out how to um, do it. I, you know, we, could send a, we could send a letter out to everyone and encouraging them um, and then see what our response even is. Um, I don't know. But I think this is the body that should be doing this. The easier we can make it, if that's possible, um, whether we can have a form that, I don't know, it just, uh, the more open-ended it is, the less likely it will be answered. If it's a very specific question, maybe that's all we need to do. But if there's any way also we can think of making it as easy as possible, um, that might assist in getting some responses. Right. And so my understanding is our primary ask of them is simply to reformat their charge into the charge template so that we have consistency of charges across committees. The, the bigger question is then we also left open the door of suggesting revisions to their charge, which is a bit more substantive. Um, and that might also matter on which committee we're asking. Um, obviously, some of these committees, Council on Aging, Board of Health, these are MGL required committees who might not necessarily have the ability to revise their charge. I'm not quite sure. Whereas others like the Amherst Center Recreation Working Group certainly has some flexibility. Right. Um, all right, so what I think, what I, think I wanna do, because I wanna move on to, to uh, other matters um, and, and save this is, um, I know George is taking some notes, I'll take some notes about 
questions that we have for ourselves as a committee as we figure out how to proceed with this. Um, and we'll come back to this probably in the fall because I think we really have to get through rules first. We, we came up with this idea of doing this when we had very little on our plate as GOL, and now we have much more on our plate as GOL. Um, so this is probably a fall activity. Because I also, and I said this before, um, want to wait until we get through the glut of appointments so these committees are doing this as full committees um, and we're not sending this task to any committee that's already struggling to be at quorum. So any final comments on this? Okay. So then, I want to move on to our next agenda item. Three, advise on how to incorporate work groups into the town council rules of procedure and for that we have Kathy with us today. Um, so, I, Kathy, I think I gave you a, a little bit of an overview in my, I sent that email so long ago that I don't remember 100% what information I provided um, regarding our discussion. Um, but we came up, we used, uh, Rule sent us some draft language um, that we used as a jumping off point. I, in our uh, packet today, have some draft work group rules that I wrote up for our last meeting that we used as sort of the boilerplate. All right, here's some draft work group rules. Um, as we continue to discuss them, the committee felt as though we were slightly unclear about what differentiated a work group from, say, an ad hoc committee uh, that includes residents. Um, and how, and there was some concern in the committee that how the appointment of work group members would go. Uh, in my sort of just draft rules, I had it be the chair. Um, there was some concern about having the chair of a committee just pick all of the members. There were some concerns about uh, membership sort of circumventing a normal process. Um, and so where we had started to lean towards the end of the discussion is are work groups necessary and is there a way to, instead of creating a whole new category of committee, uh, is there a way to perhaps use the existing structure we have through ad hoc committees to, 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 um, to uh, achieve the same purpose? Could we, have, could we have an ad hoc committee that's essentially wh what we're envisioning is a work group um, that includes members of different committees plus the public um, it, because we don't necessarily have any true constraints on what an ad hoc committee is. Um, and I think that the, this committee was on the verge of voting on a motion that had been put forth to recommend just deleting uh, rule, well, I don't remember exactly what the number was, um, and then stepped back and said, well, hold on, the, the rules of procedure put this forward, the council voted on this, um, this would be a really big step for us to take to just recommend not doing this um, without consulting people who were on rules of procedure. And at that time, all we had was Mandy Jo. Um, and she said that you were one of the main sort of proponents of work groups. Um, and so we wanted to invite you here to sort of hear your perspective. Uh, one, what did you envision a work group is and how does that differentiate from uh, an, a normal ad hoc committee that could be created? Um, and, and how might we go about putting this together? So thank you for coming, because we were not in these rules of procedure meetings, so we're flying a little blind here. Okay, um, and uh, I did just come out of the wilderness, so I'm, <laughs> and when I went to find my original, uh, I was one of the people on rules that went through a whole bunch of town rules and procedures looking for things that seemed interesting, mm -hmm. one way or the other. And I know I found this somewhere, but I don't know exactly which town. So I was hoping to come and say, which towns have this? But the, ma the main thought around this, um, and then it got even, uh, felt even more so when um, Meg Gage and several people came and proposed that we have a structure that allowed when we, ha we had some entity or a way of assessing options when something complex came up that wasn't just council members, that we could pull other people in and we would give you, um, it would be, I think of it a work group or a study group. And the existing examples that Amherst has had would be marijuana um, and downtown parking 
working group, both of which, at my understanding, were kind of set up by the town manager. Mm -hmm. So it was, we, we want to allow marijuana establishments in town. There's some state laws. How might we do this? What might be the pluses and minuses of it? And on that group, in that group, which had a timeline, were um, a staff person from town mm -hmm. uh, who would be some official, uh, some people that weren't select board members who might have knowledge about the, or would have the time to go do work on it and then had to report back where it was going to become a town ordinance by law. You know, so it was, it, the, the goal was to come up with a solution to something we wanted to do. So it's, I, I would agree that in theory you could do ad hoc. You could use the ad hoc title as something like this as long as you made it clear it was a study group and it was really weighing alternatives and assessing them. Um, pros and cons. So the most recent one that's come up, and I think we're going to handle it with an ad hoc group, mm -hmm. is the percent for art right. um, by law, where it got referred to the CRC and it got referred to finance. And uh, CRC listened a little bit and said, hmm, we need to think about this more. We need some kind of working group. Right? right? We need some kind of working group. Right. And, and then it. Right, yeah. you know, so it came up that way, and then um, the people who want to move this forward, who have a lot of knowledge, have come back to CRC a few times in emails, because they've shared them with me. We'd love a working group. We'd love to be doing this silence, you know, I mean, like, because, like, how would we put one of these together? And they said, oh, we'll have to figure out how to do that. And then in finance yesterday, this came up again, that, um, the, we've got the draft of a bylaw, which is just like the bylaw the town meeting passed, minus a section, and there's some reluctance to just go forward with that as written, but it's like, what about it? You know, the people were saying, what is it you don't like? What is missing? And it was like, oh, we need a working group. So I think what we're gonna do, Lynn asked me yesterday to do a draft charge to a committee um, to set something up that is very much like what I thought this would be, you know, where we're, it's, it's a complex issue. There are different kinds of ways we could do it. Right. Um, and and it, they, they, will, they will be consequential if we uh, change the way the original writing was. So you want people just sitting around talking about it and coming up with it and bringing it back. So, so I think the key things here is it's not just council right. members. It's got uh, people on it who might be a town staff person who would have to implement it in some way, you know, have to be on the other, the end of it, you know, deciding. So percent for art's a good example. If the money is set aside, Sonia or someone in finance has to say, here's the pot of money for this, you know, right. oversee the spending of town money. Um, so we could do it in another way. When it was referred to you, um, why we didn't just, I have the paragraph that we pulled out, you right. know, uh, the council may establish a worker study group to consider a new measure if it determines that the issue is sufficiently complex to warrant analysis of alternative approaches and or consequences of actions. Such work groups should be given a town line, timeline for reporting back from the council. So it was a very focused, you're gonna come back and give us a recommendation or a way of approaching it. So I think we could do it with ad hoc. Um, when we referred it, it, the two questions that came up is who appoints the work group? Can a committee um, such as a CRC say, we want a work group and right. just do it? You know, can we be a little less formal than we've been with a charge that the whole council has to consider with, is it four people, is it three people, what's the nature of each person on it? Can we just say, we need it, we need a couple people from this committee, maybe one from someplace else and two people with expertise and just do it um, and ask them to come back in a month, but get it moving, so these could be moving quickly. Mm -hmm. Or do we need to always bring these back to the full council and have the president be the appointing authority? Um, and how do you get the names? So the issue of 
at what level could form a group like this came up when we were discussing it in rules, and um, who makes a decision on which humans go on it. Um, and those issues were then kicked to you all to say what are some possible ways of doing this, because we were trying to differentiate it with ad hoc, as it's now written, are pretty much always council members. And the, you know, we've got this split in the way the charter set us up. As soon as it's not council members, it's town manager appointments. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's this funny kind of world that we've got. So when you all were considering um, use of the public ways and which things would have to come through the council on a vote every time we wanted to free up one parking space, um, my understanding is Mandy went over and chatted with some people. You came up with some ideas and came back. So that was a mini short-term work group that came back with how to handle it. But it wasn't a complex enough issue. It was just a solution to this. But we didn't have to go through a whole charge uh, or a work group around public ways. So it, it could be potentially but the more informal, but the key thing is it's not just council members. So that if we needed an architect, if we needed an engineer, if we needed, you know, some broader scope, someone from UMass to be able to say how do other places do it with time. Um, that that's my own. And I didn't have the time um, when we were doing rules because we were on the short timeline. What I had wanted to do is call up some towns and say, how does this actually work? You know, how uh, Andy and I on finance went over on trying to understand how Northampton's finance committee, when they have this, you get the budget and you have one month and the council has to vote on it, the finance committee, how did they do that? And we found they did joint sessions. They mm -hmm. just didn't try to do them separately. So that's what we, we did it the way Northampton was doing it to, to try to learn from other people on how did they use this vehicle. I didn't have time to try to figure th this out. So those were the issues. Um, can a committee set this up? Um, does it have to be at the council level? And how are, are the members chosen? So yesterday's quick and dirty was a good example for me of your question of, can we handle it just another way but make it clear we mean two kinds of ad hocs, not mm -hmm. just council members? Because Lynn said, okay, Kathy, draft a charge and say how many people and how many council from which committees, you know, say five people, you know, one from CRC, one from finance, one from the town if you need one and, and bring it to the full council and maybe if we're lucky on August 19th, we'll have time for it since we're doing something else. Um, you know, and meanwhile, the two people who want to move this are feeling like, right. hmm, yeah. you know, two committees, back to the council, back again, you know, but, it, you know, trying to figure out how do you do things in a fluid way right. um, that doesn't have us going here, then here, then here, with, without enough knowledge to make informed decisions as council members. You know, we need to gather the knowledge before we're asked to vote. Go ahead. No, 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 I was gonna say, Pat, I know you were trying to speak before, and then George has his hand up. But you were trying to speak like 10 minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, the work groups, uh, the way you're presenting it and the way I've been thinking about it are critical to the work of CRC, uh, because that's exactly what our role is. And, um, it seems to me that clarifying how a committee, how any committee works is also an important part of this. And it seems to me that committees should be trusted to set up a work group. Um, and because there's always a difference of opinion on a committee, so there, I'm trusting that there would be a difference of opinion in who they chose to be on the committee. There needs to be flexibility. Uh, and there also needs, particularly for CRC, this sense of collaborating um, across committees because uh, one impact will be financial. And if, we, if we're trying to find the impacts of things, we can't wait for the finance committee to meet and for us not to know anything about it. So we had talked about uh, liaisons, um, informal liaisons sitting on different committees so that we could at least have information and communication. 
So, um, so I, I, in many ways, I support this. Um, but I really would like it to be, to, to create a structure that still has a sense of informality because, uh, and, and flexibility so that we're not wasting time going back and forth. No committee can do anything ultimately without bringing it to the council. So it seems to me we should have some flexibility in, in making or creating our recommendations. You know, I just want to build on what you said, Pat, because CRC was one of the main things I was thinking about when, or rules was when we were first doing this, even though it hadn't been set up yet, but as we were setting up uh, it and we were in the ad hoc group to even set up CRC, it's such a broad committee in terms of its what's in its mix that you can imagine some a, one person or two people on there is really interested in the affordable housing and policies around that and something new is potentially out there and it's meanwhile we have committees of the town that are working on that and people with deep expertise so well in advance of something coming before it you could have a work group on that. Someone else might be really interested in um, roads and sidewalks and our whole transportation policy. What are we doing about complete streets, which is a whole different topic. And it's not come up yet, but it's going to, and that's a, a different view. And someone else is on zone, and maybe they're crosses, but, but, but to enable that committee to say, this is going to come up six months from now. We need to know more about it. We need to put together a work group. That, that's what the idea right. about this is, is to think in advance and then be ready. Right. And, and I also think that sometimes a working group can be called and meet twice and have completed what they needed to do. So then to set it through the council and do all those kinds of things is very inefficient, I think. And so Percent for Art is my example of that we're going to put them through an ad hoc charge for the full council when we just voted to send it to two, you know, it's so right. it's going to be months to maybe put two more sentences into this bylaw, that, you know, or for what qualify, whatever it is that's. And if you come to our bylaw, it's pretty complicated. <laughs> but you know, but no, but we may want to. But what I'm saying, it may end up that there are three paragraphs we're adding to it, but it's they're they're important paragraphs or eliminating. Yeah. I want to give Georgia a chance. I like the idea of flexibility. I like the idea of committees being able to do these uh, things on their own without having to go back to the council. The concern or question I have has to do with the open meeting law and to what degree work groups would be subject to it. Um, uh, and I don't know if we know the answer to that. Maybe it's a simple answer. Um, do you have to have postings 48 hours in advance? Do you have to have minutes? Do you have to have public comment? Um, and maybe there's, again, a very simple answer to this, but that's another concern. I think that was kind of one of the main concerns was that we want flexibility, we want to be able to do things uh, fairly quickly and informally, and it seems essential to the, the functioning of, 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 what, of our, what we're trying to do, but are we going to be, uh, if we're subject to open meeting law, if these working groups have all these restrictions placed upon them, um, is that going to frustrate this? Um, so that's a question I, I have. Um, I'm not trying to circumvent open meeting law. I'm not trying to keep anyone out, but um, it seems there's a tension here between the idea of transparency and the idea of getting something done. Does anyone know the answer to that question? Really? Why? Because um, I don't have an answer to that question, but um, it seems to me that if we have a, a, a work group that's coming together to study something, they're not deciding policy. Right. And it's not a collection necessarily of counselors. Uh, it's a group of people looking at a, an issue and pulling out the pros and cons uh, and then presenting it back to their committee, uh, which is a public body. And so they're, they're coming forward. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think you're bringing up important so, points. So and I, mean, I'll shut up so you but, can uh, I think that's exactly the reason it, to the extent I understand GOL. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is the committee that should ask that question and get it answered by uh, town legal. Right. You know, in other words, if, if we want some, a structure like this and we're, it's informal, does the meeting have to get posted? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, yeah. do, do there have to be minutes? Um, yeah. 
you know, what, what, where, where are things similar but different? I think, um, you know, what, if a, yes. So I, I think it's just a question. And if the answer is you have to post something, it's not that hard to say what we're, a group right. of five people are meeting. Um, right. You know, and right. if all you're doing is working on a document to, you can say we, we consider the, you know, it, the minutes can be short and sweet, but you know, right. I think those are the reasons it went to, you know, how can we avoid any um, violations of things that we don't, we're not trying to violate here, we're right. trying to expedite, yeah. Right, so uh, first of all, I mean, so my understanding is if the committee has more, if, if the work group would have more than two count, more than one counselor on it, it would absolutely be subject to open meeting law because it would be a subcommittee of the council. Um, if it was a work group that had one counselor and the public, that I'm less clear on, um, but. These are answerable, right? I mean, these, these are answerable. Yeah, so yeah. My, my thought on this is we, you know, if, if we come up with work group rules, my intention was to run it by town attorney. Do, do, were there rules of procedure run by town attorney? I never asked that. It was me. run by Margaret. Um, okay. Who's you know, you know, no, so she good. basically, yeah. we said, is there anything in yeah. here that needs a second opinion? And she and Paul read, yep. read it with that set of eyes and came back with no, um, you Great. know, with no, you know, that we were uh, well within uh, the power of the council to write things this way, and this paragraph was in there. Yeah. You know, we only pulled it out at the very last minute um, with leaving the sentence in because it was this issue of uh, making it clear that a com committee can appoint, you know, the authority to appoint and duration, and then, you know, if we have to add the sentence and complies with open, if there's a counselor on it, we, we didn't want to get too specific other than to say this composition right. is beyond the council, you know, it's not a committee of the yeah. council per se, with just counselors on it. Yeah. So for, for me personally, I think regardless of what we do with 10.5 work groups, we also need to potentially make some edits to 10.4 ad hoc uh, council, because one of my questions, my first question was what differentiates a work group from an ad hoc council committee? And my answer to that was exactly what you said, an ad hoc council committee would be composed of counselors, um, which 10.4 doesn't actually say, right? It's, it's sort of an assumption that an, a council committee is composed of counselors, although we do have, and granted it was called out in the charter, finance committee has resident members on it. So there is some slight precedent for having resident members, for now at least, on finance committee. Um, I know that for CRC, in the creation of CRC, there was some discussion about including residents. I know that didn't end up in the final charge. You know I was one of the opponents of that. I know you were. But um, I, this, is, this is one of the things that Pat and I always disagree on, uh, is whether residents should be on council committees. But um, so I think that if the, what really differentiates a work group from an ad hoc council committee is ad hoc council committees are only counselors, then that needs to be called out in the rules. And if we see a situation where an ad hoc council committee might allow for non-counselors, that's where I have trouble understanding the difference. Um, the second part of it that seemed to make sense for what differentiated them was the efficiency that's, that's allowed for, um, for work groups. And exactly what you were saying, I mean, what you were talking about, the charge having, because if you write a charge for an ad hoc council committee for percent for art, right? It has to be referred to us, right? Because we review charges, and then it has to go back to the council. And it and given, I mean, especially right now, the council's not meeting again until August nineteenth. I mean, it, it potentially creates this really long well, process. Well, we, we've set up a, a bureaucrat. Uh, in my personal opinion, we have a bureaucratic nightmare right now going <laughs> on with doing the simplest things, allowing yeah. three of us to get together to talk about something. Um, you know, we, we're, we're doing this circular, and the, the GOL process, instead of just being, yes, is this complex, you know, it's an edit and wordsmith it, even when it's sometimes minor. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know if we have a format and people come pretty close to it, because you look at right. the old committee structures, they weren't perfect, but these are not, we're not, uh, anyway. But 
so the other thing that differentiates it is these were uh, ad hoc or clearly president appointments. Exactly. Um, and the reason we've run into some issues of non-residents, I mean non-elected council members on these, is the charter does this split as soon as it's not a council. So when we set up the new climate committee, right. it, it was you know a mixture. Um, the charter didn't envision mixed, except right. for finance, where there was the thing. But I think work groups sh should almost always be mixed. Yeah, that's, the I that's the idea of these, that we're tapping into the big town out there and bringing other people in to help us solve a specific issue that right. we want to work on. So I guess for And the town manager can do this now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 work, the parking group thing was set, right. set up, but, I, but the council can't. So this was to enable us right. to be able to think this way. So one of the one of the ways I was leaning towards the end of the last GOL meeting, and, and I should also, and I mentioned this in the council meeting, we intend to have no vote on this today, and I think it's because this is substantive enough that we need to think about it over a few different meetings. Um, but where I was sort of leaning at the end of the last meeting was, is it possible to modify our rules around ad hoc council committees to make this workable? So specify that, um, I, I guess it would need to do, it would need to have three changes, right? One would be, that the council may establish an ad hoc committee, but that a, a committee of the council could also establish an ad hoc committee. And therefore, that would change the appointing authority to the, the chair of either the council or the, the committee of the council. Um, two, to specifically call out that residents can be on ad hoc council committees. Um, and then three, um, getting rid of the idea that an ad hoc council committee has to have a charge. And, and, and the charge aspect is sort of weird because the rules of procedure was an ad hoc council committee, y'all had a charge. Um, but the CRC ad hoc committee to come up with the CRC charge didn't have a charge. Did you? Did you have a charge? I don't think you did. I, I think, we, well, we were, we, we I don't think so. Maybe right. we never. Yeah, and that's and, we were, so we right. were right. Yeah. and because and we didn't have a charge yeah come right and the ad hoc committee to finalize the ECAC charge was an ad hoc council committee but did not have a charge and so we've cre in the council in our short tenure we've created ad hoc committees that we created charges for and we've created ad hoc committees that we have I mean does goals yeah, have a charge I just you know Evan I I just have to say I think you're you're making this more complicated than it needs to be. I mean, ad, ad hoc committees are called out in the charter and they're presidential appointments. They're, they're short-term, non-standing committees. I mean, kind of we understand what those things are. Right. They're, they're subgroups of the council dealing with something that are gonna come and go. They're gonna, they're not a forever committee. Right. Um, this is just different and just make sure we write it a way that this is different. But I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how it's meaningfully different, right? And, and, and to, your, to your point that I'm overcomplicating it, to, I, I'm trying to simplify by saying if we have, count, if we have two types of existing yeah. deliberative bodies, council, like standing committees and ad hoc committees of the council, that to me is simpler than trying to explain to people, well, we have standing committees, we have ad hoc committees, but then we also have this weird different thing called work groups. To me, the fewer types of bodies we have, the simpler it makes it. Uh, except that the charter says the president appoints ad hoc and council committees. It names them. And I just, you know, if we want CRC to be able to act and create a work group, I don't think we have to go back to Lynn to figure out who's on it. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to say this is a short term, I don't think if you're worried about the public being confused, I don't think we need to worry about that. I think they will be so delighted <laughs> that, that we can do things yeah. qu quickly and efficiently and pull them in, uh, that they'll understand they're on a working group. You, know, you should have seen the percent for our people. Okay, we have to do a charge and we have to go back to the council and we have to get appointed. And, and they were hoping at CRC level, Steve, who's the chair, would just say, Here's your person, go work with these two people, come back to us in a month. That's what they were hoping would happen, you know. But we could also modify 10.4 to remove the part that says council's charges 
and then you, we don't require a charge for an ad hoc committee, and then that eliminates that bureaucratic step. It's, I mean, we've had, yeah. we, we've had several ad hoc committees for the council that didn't have charges, and so now we require them in our rules, but we don't have to. That's my question. I want to, I sort of and then George. Oh, okay, George. I, I, it's, uh, it's almost a clarifying question uh, because to me, um, what Kathy said was, you know, when the percent for art people here, why didn't somebody from CRC go sit with them and work on it? Uh, and that to me, and why didn't we? Why, uh, no shame or blame on the committee. What I'm saying is we didn't feel like we had the ability, the flexibility to do that. So there's a so that's a, a, another issue creeping in. It's not even a work session, maybe uh, you know if you don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that the committee work can go forward if one person or two people from the committee are meeting, and then that comes back fairly quickly to the committee. Um, so there there needs to be some kind of clarity about what a committee has the right to do. Right. And, and we really need to think about that. I'm sorry. George. Uh, things haven't got the same time. OK. We're, he's, we're he's, good. he's getting better at it. <laughs> he's trying to. Uh, but if he also has to hold down his mic while he types and talks at the same time, that I don't think he can do. Um, Evan could hold it. No, no. Right, you um, can use the special mic. Evan's so taking notes as well. And we'll sort it out. Um, I don't have a problem with three different entities as long as we are clear about what each uh, can and cannot do. Um, I don't want a situation in which to create an ad hoc committee, you have to always go to the council. So it sounds like Evan's thinking, well, we just have two kinds of bodies and we write the rules for the ad hoc bodies in such a way that uh, I'm, here I'm speaking for him and he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but that we'd write the, the rules in such a way that um, you could um, go ahead and, and create an ad hoc committee uh, on a committee without having to go to the council to do it. Um, there is the issue that's been raised by Kathy that the charter seems to say, well, the charter just designates that ad hoc committees must be appointed by the council president. And we clearly don't want the council, well, I don't want the council president appointing um, every single ad hoc committee if we're trying to create work groups, in essence. So that's why I'm thinking maybe it makes sense to have three entities, and ad hoc committees refer to council committees created by the council, and we have rules for that. And work groups would be a separate um, body um, that could be created um, by anybody, actually. It could be created by a committee, could be created by the council, for all we care. Um, but there, we would have to distinguish, and that's what we're trying to do, I understand. Um, but maybe I'll ask Evan this question. If you have just two uh, bodies, um, committees and ad hoc committees, um, are you envisioning writing the rules for ad hoc committees in such a way that it would essentially um, make it, it would make it possible for this, this idea of flexibility, and they could be appointed by the uh, various committee chairs, or, but, and not by the council president necessarily? Is that what you have in mind? Because um, uh, I'm thinking there's nothing wrong with having three different entities as long as we just have them clearly defined. And um, you know, sure. Um, sim simple answer: yes. Um, we, and again, you know, I don't have a rigid position. I'm, a lot of this is still sort of I'm processing the best way to go about doing this. Um, last time I brought to this group these draft work group rules that are in your folder that you both have open. And I think, I guess where I'm at is, to me it's possible to essentially modify these draft work group rules and stick them into ad hoc council. Um, because that, because to me, I, don't, I personally don't think an ad hoc council committee ne always needs a charge, right? And I, and I think we've seen that. I don't, I don't think goals, I don't ever remember, did we vote on a charge for goals? I don't, goals did. Oh, goals, goals ad, ad hoc goals. I don't. They don't have a charge. So we have active ad hoc no, council committees. 
that are that are kind of almost what we're talking about, except they don't have residence, they don't have charges. So one of the, I would actually like to revise the ad hoc council rule to say that we don't need a charge, right? Um, and in that case, you get around that. Now, Kathy brings up the, the point that the president appoints, and, and that's true, that's 2.2b in the, in the charter. Um, however, I mean, there's nothing to say that we, we can't write into the rules that 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 appointment is delegated to the chair. I mean, we did that for public ways, right? I mean, technically, we're in charge of every public ways request, and we said, hold on, we don't want to do that, and so we've delegated some of our authority. It's, it's possible to delegate that, that authority. And so if, if the only, and this is where I'm saying, if the only hang up is, well, the president appoints ad hoc council committee, so we have to create a whole new type of body to avoid that situation, I feel like there's probably a way where we can we can say, if they're created by the council, it's the president, but if they're created by a committee, that authority is delegated to the, the chair of the, the committee. But that feels to me like we're muddying the water, and I'd rather see three distinct things. Okay. Which I didn't feel before, but I feel like that's not really true. Kathy? So I, I just pulled up our rules. I, the, the, as last I saw them on May 20th, if you, under the 10.4, if it says, the last sentence says, council charges shall es to establish ad hoc committees shall specify the purpose of membership. <laughs> if you said, council decisions to establish ad hoc committees shall special, then you can get the, just insert the word decision, you know, because we, we, charges, charges have now taken on a whole meaning right. that, if you had asked me what a charge was in January, I would have <laughs> said it's three sentences um, because when we were set up, the rules ad hoc committee was just after we'd had a three hour vote on the vice president, <laughs> Lynn said, okay, we need a rules subcommittee when we didn't vote on them. Who wants to be on it? And she said, okay, you're all on it, mm -hmm. done. You know, I mean, it was like, it was, you know, right. and then we were told, we. You know, we, we had a timeline. We had, so if we just say council decision, then leave the rest of it as it is, or if you need to say uh, ad hoc committees uh, have council members on it, so that's distinguished. With, it doesn't say that, it implies it. Um, then work groups become very distinct, that work groups you can write can include residents, include staff members, and they, do, they are for specific issues. I think you wanna make, and they, they can be created by committees. They can be, cre and just write it very simply, they can be created by a council committee. And then find out, th and then they, shall, they will need to comply with public meeting law, period. You know, what, whatever that means, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think you could, <clears throat> making it distinct will also feel like we're being very responsive to people saying there are a lot of people out there who are willing and able to help when you're wrestling with, you know, and, and this idea of cross-working with standing other committees that are not committees of the council and the world at large, um, make it clear that we're not just isolating ourselves as 13 people. arguing hard to not try to make it a subset of ad, I'm tr arguing very hard that I don't think it should be a subset of ad hoc, ad hocs, it should be its own thing. It should be its own thing. Uh, and it, to me, there's something, uh, I, I want as much input from people in Anders as I can when I go to make my decisions as a counselor. Uh, but I don't know if I want every, so I want flexibility about who's gonna, who I'm going to go to in a study group for CRT. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not clear about what bugging me here. I, um, I'm, I'm riding somewhere between all these hundreds of people, and I don't know if I want residents. You know there, that there's, and I'm somewhere. I'm like, what am I thinking about here? So I'm not being clear, and I'm going to let it go for a second. Here. It gets clearer how they try to say something. So I want to. There should be You received the paragraph that we pulled out, right? Yeah. So okay. if if you uh, you should have access to our packet. Yeah. Um, 
as I said, I got off the boat and I oh. haven't. Oh, I, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, say, I'm not saying you should have read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but what I am saying is if, um, so it, you should have access to our packet and there have sort of the draft work group rules that I wrote and the first part of it is a slightly modified version of, of the paragraph that, that you all came up with. I elaborated on um, some aspects such as um, um, specifying things like it, they don't require a charge, specifying things that they're, they're there to serve the council, they're not a town committee, so the town manager isn't appointing them. Um, all right, I feel like to some extent we've exhausted the conversation of whether they should be a, a separate yeah. thing. So I want to move on to another aspect of this um, that we've all touched on, but and it was a big point of conversation last time, which is, um, so assuming that's a separate thing, um, who appoints? And so the, the idea I put in here for, because I had no better idea, was whatever committee create, whether it's the full council or, or the, the committee, the chair of that committee appoints. That sort of, that puts a lot of power in the chair of a committee and... Um, right now it's all in the president, so what? Well, sure, right. <laughs> um, but how do we feel about, and I, wanna, and I wanna hear also from Kathy, because I know that was one of the questions rules wrestled with, and one of the reasons this got taken out was the question of appointing authority. Um, do we feel, you know, it, it should, should work groups go as their own separate thing, uh, do we feel it's appropriate for the chair of the originating body to be the appointing authority. Are there other ideas for how these things, how, the, how people should be appointed to these? Do we see benefits or drawbacks to the chair being the appointing authority? I, Kathy? absent another suggestion, I think that's fine. Um, we have to trust our chairs to be completely even handed and sometimes the chair might be turning to the vice chair or another person saying, who did you have in mind? <laughs> you know, so that would be the way I would think about it because, you know, I'll take CRC, Steve knows planning and zoning. If it was transportation or if it was housing, might turn to somebody else saying, you know, are there particular people that come to mind or would you go out and find a few, the way they used to find finance committee people? You know, when it was the old finance committee, but Jim Fistrang would ask around, who do you think might be good on finance committee? Right. And people would give him names and he would call them up, you know, I mean, you know, to almost invite them in, you know, someone over at UMass School of Management or someone who used to be on a, you know, but in, so I think as long as we trust our chairs to operate in that way, I think chair is fine. Okay. Other and you know, there's some things that if we write it um, that the committee shall appoint, the committee could make that decision. You know, I, I, I don't always feel like we have to write down everything, but if you feel like you have to write it that the chair of the committee shall appoint. <laughs> you know, when we were talking about who would do the interviews before OCA did it for finance members, we were toying with would, be the, would it be the vice chair or the chair, depending on who had time, you know. Mm -hmm. But appointing authority is um, right. uh, D. Where are you? I do. The yeah, chair of the original. I think that why can't it just say the committee shall appoint all work group members? They can. I, mean, this is, I guess this is my question. Yeah. I, Ka what Kathy said before, if absent another suggestion, it was where I landed on chair. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. oh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, because it seems that the way most of the committees work, we really do talk to each other. And we're collaborating, so it seems like that could be a decision that would be, you know, it may be that we, you know, I volunteer to go off and do something about housing for CRC or to work on these rules or something, then this is two people, blah, blah, blah. Right. Because I have time and somebody else doesn't, so we'll change it up later. George? I'm just thinking practically. I, I, I think what everyone's saying makes sense. We're collaborative, we work together, we should trust our chairs. Um, if we it did read the committee of, of the originating body shall appoint all work group members, what does that actually mean in practice? Um, we talk, imagine we wanted to create an ad hoc committee, for, or a, excuse me, a work group for this body. Um, 
there is something to be said for having one individual whose job it is is to sort of come up with a list of names, reach out to people, make some decisions, but it would be subject, I would think, to um, the group. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess if we leave it, if we, if we take our chair and just put committee, um, it'll still work fine. Um, I, I just like the idea of having somebody <laughs> who's actually supposed to, uh, you know, appoint, uh, as opposed to just the committee shall appoint. But um, it sounds like what you're saying is that it'll work out. It, one way or the other, um, and this, t t yeah. I know I'm not finding, by the last packet I find was 7-Eleven, so I might, might be looking at the right place. In GOL? Not on SharePoint. It, should I be on SharePoint? Oh, oh, share, if you're in SharePoint, yeah. Oh, no, I didn't go to SharePoint. I went to the meeting posted. Oh, yeah, that packet hasn't been, the, today's packet isn't there. It's in SharePoint. <laughs> Share, SharePoint is, George. I'm also wondering, just as an aside, while Kathy looks this up, whether it makes sense for us, given the time, uh, we still have some, just go through what Evan has done, pretty much line by line, and see if we can come to some consensus ourselves. Um, I mean, we're doing that in a way, um, but um, it'd be nice to feel like, because um, it seems like we're making some progress here. We're getting some clarity on, it, seems, it sounds like we're looking at three entities so we do want to clearly define work groups and distinguish them from ad hoc committees. Um, and um, so maybe we've already done it. Maybe settling this issue, it's, it's fixed, but it might be worth it going through this um, line by line to see if there are any other issues. Um, and then if we can come to an agreement, we've got actually something we can uh, work with okay, next time. So I'm, I think I'm in the right place. Which Am I opening up this meeting and then going to draft work group rules? Yep. Is that what I'm going to? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this then seems to be change chair of the originating body to the uh, committee of the originating body. Is that what um, I'm hearing here? Sounds like it. Yeah, so let me, let me, why don't I just walk through this actually, that might be the, so the first paragraph is actually, um, all, is very similar to what rules and procedure um, gave. I think I added a little bit of language in the beginning um, about in-depth research, and then I think the last sentence I added, which was simply to define what a work group actually uh, means. And again, if we were to adopt this, a work group is defined as a temporary group that includes individuals who are not members of the originating body. I would want to also go back to 10.4 and specify that council committees are, uh, ad hoc council committees are composed of councilors, because I do want there to be a very clear. I, and this is the thing, I'm not, I feel like I've seemed super rigid to the idea of only two, and I'm really not. It's no. just if we have three, I want to make sure that the distinction is very yeah, clear. Right, right. And I think that requires revising 10.4 slightly to specify. I would just, you know, individuals who are not members of the originating body, mm -hmm. you could say includes members beyond counselors. You know, so it, it, the, the point is it's not just counselors. It's not just not, you know, so you're not going to pick I can include, yeah, so right. you have include members not of the originating body, but we, if you, to the extent we did drafting, we tried to just go right yeah, count to counselors who are not members. So you don't need that members of the originating body because it, it could have a town staff person on. Yeah, you know, right. and it, the, the point is that it's, uh, it's tapping beyond ours. Okay, and I think, so, and I think the, the, the other reason that was slightly, um, I struggled with that wording, because to me it was also not just, so it, if CRC creates a work group for Percent for Art, it would include not just, it would include individuals who are not counselors, but it would also potentially include people from finance, so it would include counselors who were not members, and that's, I guess, yeah. what I was trying to get that language, right. is that it's, it's gonna be, 
people who are not members of the originating body, some of which might be counselors, some of which might not be, because we might have, you know. Could fix the wording to make yeah. that clear. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna make comments on this and I can edit it. Word online is it, so much more You are gonna have to do a lot of work, because the beginning is town council or town council committee. So something beyond the originating body is beyond the town council is referencing one of the subjects subjects and the mm -hmm. other is this you've got a lot of complex things added to this and and here you I'm just looking by a majority vote of the full body the town council council so you're having the full body vote to set up a work group the way I read this either the the full body referring to either the town council, if it's created by the town council, or a town council committee. No, but you don't have the qualifiers, right? The full body, uh, the town, if you start with the subject, the town council or a town council committee may by majority vote create a work committee. Then you make it clear that the com council, co see the majority vote of the full body, the full body is the council otherwise. So change the actor to be the beginning, the town council or a town council committee may by majority vote create a work group. So, where's that? so okay. two possible actors here mm -hmm. as the beginning of the sentence. And, and one thing I wanna make sure is clear with that wording um, is the reason I, it's majority vote of the full body and not just majority vote is there had been some discussion in this committee that the vote threshold should be slightly higher to do something like that. So right now, there's three of us here. A majority vote would be me and Pat decided we're gonna create a work group, right? right? But a majority vote of the full GOL would require three votes instead of just two. Um, same thing with the council, right? Um, we, that does also is, it can be a point of discussion. We don't have to have that. It could just be whoever's oh, there. Oh, you're just saying, I qualified it to just be majority vote. You can say majority vote of the full body if you want to. I just want to make the actor be. No, no, I know. Of, I'm yeah. just saying since we're since we since we're You're talking saying. about that sentence, that majority vote of the full body was that that wording was chosen very specifically yeah. to specify that the, the vote threshold is higher than just who a majority of whoever's there. Um, we don't have to have that. We can just write by majority vote. but it would require at least three votes in any council committee and at least seven for the full town council. I think we should leave a full body um, okay. just yeah. to prevent uh, I, you know, I think three that's people. Fine. Okay. Great. So uh, A. We're going to leave the, this, the concluding sentence for Evan to work with. Um, I'm still, a work group is defined as yeah. a temporary group that uh, includes members other than or beyond counselors, yeah. who strike individuals who are not members of the originating body. Yeah. I'm, I'm right now I'm just making comments because Good. I can't do track changes on here. So, fine. so I'm going to later put this into a Word document, do the track changes so you can see but for now I'm just doing comments. Good, and, and are we thinking of, of making it explicit? Uh, could be st town staff, could be members of the public, or do we figure this language is sufficient? Do we wanna make it, is, am I overthinking this? And by the blank looks, this, the answer seems to be yes, I am. So we'll just leave it, we'll let Evan decide, but I don't get it. Uh, you feel we don't need to have examples yeah, of people. I don't think okay, we need fine. To call out examples. Do, do they need to be residents? I mean, to me, we they don't, I mean, we could have someone from the university who lives in Hadley, like, right, because they, yeah. if they have expertise, and mm. which is why I think I'd almost prefer to keep it sort of broad. Good. A. So it, again, you know, under your little b, the motion to create a work group must include at a minimum the composition of regard to numbers of originating body, number of counselors, number of counselors, and uh, 
Cabinet, resident that's not staff or other. It just, you know, there was, because it doesn't have to be just the originating body. You know, as, as Pat was saying, you might want to pull one from finance, one from someplace else. Right. So just change it to regard number of counselors and uh, residents, town staff, or others. You know, whatever, whatever you want to do, but you can do in the B sub one is what I'm looking at, um, the originating body. So the composition. Right. You're going to just going to say who's on it, but it's not. Again, it makes it clear it's not just counselors. So are we good with A? Yeah, we're trying to work so uh, to A and B. We're trying to go together. So uh, take take our time. Um, we're okay with A. Is the question? But A looks okay. fine. So B, we're gonna, I'm going to look at this B one. Other comments on B? And so I'm just saying B1, the notion of non-members is just changed to the number of counselors, comma, residents, town staff, or others, or other members. You know, in other words, a non-member is an odd concept to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so just... Other comments on B? Difference between two and three? They could be combined, honestly. Uh, to me, the issue is, so percent for art is the issue, but then you can't just say you're gonna, are, what, what's the task, right? Do you, are you coming back with revised bylaw? Are you coming back with a presentation of alternatives? Are you coming, right? What do you actually, it's almost, I mean, actually, so, so actually, two, three, and four are all sort of similar, and to some extent, I wrote, I want to be very clear that this is, I did not put this forth as like, here's what I think it exactly should be. Yeah. Um, my, yeah. my task was to put forth ideas. I, and so two, three, and four, to some extent, are variations on similar things that I'm I putting would just forth combine, as ideas. I would just go the, uh, the measure, issue, and task that shall be the work group's focus, get rid of three the measure, comma, issue, and task that shall be the work group's focus. And then, you know, it's, it's like, what are you supposed to do? Right. Is all in two. Do. And what, do, what are we expecting from you at the end? I mean, I, since we're doing this together as a group, I apologize for bouncing back and forth, but um, I can see Evan's logic and why he broke this out. Um, and it might be wise to leave it this way um, because it's asking three very different questions. Uh, it may be true, I mean, as I originally thought, what's the difference? And I guess that was an open question, actually. And I think um, um, there is a difference, obviously, between the larger issue. Um, and it's kind of for, for forces whoever is creating the work group to think, okay, um, what, is the large, what is the issue here? Um, what specifically are we asking these people to do? And what do we want from them when they're done? And um, maybe in the real world, none of these will be <laughs> answered very clearly, but the hope is that they would be. And so maybe there is some sense in uh, his th original. Then it's okay, because these none of these are more than two lines, lo exactly. more than one line right. long. And so. it, it, it is, these are three very different questions, and all three should be asked. And um, certainly the answer would not be the same for all of them. Maybe two and three turn out to be the same, but certainly four wouldn't be. Um, and so this these, this is good, I think, and a date certain um, uh, to produce its deliverables. Um, so I guess I'm going back. To, I asked the question in an open sense, and I think the answer is that these are very specifically mentioned and different. And so let's leave them. Be my thought. Okay. I think these look fine then, mm -hmm. as long as you change one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. That 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 makes sense. I think. C. I have no problem. I'm okay with C. Are there co any comments on C? D. Uh, we're changing. We already 
Oh, I didn't, I have. So we're thinking about putting this to the committee itself, makes the appointments, not the chair. Okay. I forgot to add that note. Okay. E, this came directly from the language that is provided to us from the rules of procedure. That makes sense, I think. That needs to be somebody who's overseeing it until they figure out who wants to be in charge. Okay. Again, it, it probably would have to more formally the board to be one of chair this. Can you, can you see? Yeah. yeah. I mean, at any but point, the chair could delegate. No, no I don't. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for asking, Pat, but, but I don't. Should we write George Ryan will preside <laughs> over every oh. every work group until chair is no, elected? who's not here today? <laughs> Who do we want? Steve. Make Steve, Steve do Steve. it. <laughs> um, F, obviously, we want town attorney opinion on, but I yes, put it in there because I, I, my personal feeling is that it probably will. Yeah. Um, and then G is just dissolution. Yeah. Any final comments? So the thought is that, that Evan would go through this briefly one last time, and then what happens? So um, we, our committee next meets uh, on August 7th, I believe. Our council next meets on the 19th, but we next meet on the 7th. Of course, we're missing two of our members today, um, both of which had fairly strong feelings on work groups in our last meeting. So my intention is to bring back a revised version. Um, hopefully they will read them the wonderful minutes that George is taking of this discussion. Right. Um, maybe we'll suggest they watch the video. <laughs> and um, that will, and then I think th at that point we'll probably continue this discussion and hopefully vote mm -hmm. on something to put forth to the council. Um, uh, as our president mentioned last time, it is work, because of the two reading rule, right? I mean, it would not be voted on until the earliest, the 26th, probably more likely September 9th. So it gives us a little bit of time um, if we expect that first read might be the 26th. Um, but I would expect this on the agenda. All right, with that, because we spent okay, a lot. I, I just have nothing. one suggestion on E. I, mm -hmm. did, I went back to do our original rules because I hadn't remembered that we ever put we brought the chair of the main council in to preside over the first election. I don't remember writing that sentence, so it clearly slipped by me, because when we first met at Rules, we just looked around and said, who wants to be chair? So, but could you make it E, the chair or vice chair of the originating body? So I, I don't want this to be that the thing can't even meet till Steve can be, a, you know, but we want to leave the work group flexible to start meeting right away and mm -hmm. not be dependent on busy people's time schedule. Yeah. It could also be the chair or designee. Yeah, why don't we put designee because... Or designee, you know, so... It could be that both the chair and the vice chair are not... Yeah, the chair or designee because you might... I'll use the example here that CRC says this, this member is going to this committee yeah. for the very first meeting they could preside until they elect a chair. You know, just make it fast, yeah. That designate works. All right. So uh, with that, I think I want to move on to the next agenda <laughs> item. Ooh. Um, so again, we're not voting on this today. We'll continue discussion on this on our August 7th meeting. So then I want to move on to our next agenda item. Kathy, you're welcome to stay, but please do not feel obligated. <laughs> um, but we have an exciting conversation to hear from George about a policy on resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, and citations. So if you leave, I will be crushed. I'll put my things together very slowly so I can give you full deference. So, so uh, again, as, as a reminder for our committee, there was a request that we develop some type of policy of the council. Um, not it doesn't necessarily have to be a rule, although it could be. Um, for how we handle resolutions, proclamations, commemorations, citations. George took on this task. I believe he met with Alyssa, um, who had some opinions on this. And uh, turn it over to you. What, I'm sorry, what agenda item is this, just for the minutes? This is agenda uh, four, item. agenda item four. You have in your packet, um, you put it in there the other day, 
Um, I think it says something in definitions. Definitions. Does everybody right. have that in front of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was my creation for us to at least begin a discussion. Um, there really, uh, there seem to be two topics here, but I, one has to do with proclamations, resolutions, commemorations, and, cite, and I added citations, I think. Um, and then there's the flags and, right. and that. And so we are going to deal then, here with proclamations, resolutions. Yeah, I okay. have these listed as two separate Thank agenda you. items. Good. So the first task is simply define and clarify each. So we could begin with that. Um, this was also something that Alyssa suggested that um, just be clear on what each one is and having that written down. Uh, and then she had a few thoughts about um, them in general, um, which uh, maybe we should come to after we look at these definitions and see if, if they're clear enough, if we want to revise them, or if there are other problems. Um, so I, I would suggest we start with that, and then we can turn to um, the larger issue of policy. So can I ask, did you write these? Did you find these? I did what every intelligent adult does these days. I went to uh, my uh, uh, computer and typed in the <laughs> <laughs> and came up with these definitions. And um, they came from uh, standard dictionaries and so forth. Okay. Um, I've slightly modified them, but I tried to, because um, um, I had the same question I'm sure all of us do. Um, when you, we tend to use these, or some of them anyway, as synonyms, but in fact, it seems they are four distinct things, and they have four distinct functions. So um, essentially, I did, no, I did not create this out of my head. Um, I went to the dictionary and um, then slightly edited them and tried to compress them. And, but we can do more of that or uh, whatever. But. Pat, do you have comment? Well, I'm thinking about what George said to me the other day. <laughs> Um, and a resolution, it looks here like a legislature does make resolutions as well as. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. No, yeah, no, absolutely. We, yeah, I um, thought you were saying the other day that it's not legislation, so we shouldn't be doing this. Well, I, I, just, that's something we'll talk about in a few minutes, though I don't <laughs> think, I actually don't think it's probably relevant but uh, in the long term, but we certainly can. But you're absolutely right. We do um, make resolutions. They're formal expressions of opinion. Sure. Um, an intention, that's right, um, and usually involve a vote. Take a break, Shirley. I guess my, to make things simple, uh, what, what are our reactions to these definitions? Yeah, so um, my only, the only comment I had on them um, was a citation is a, is a formal public statement praising a person or persons. Um, is that would it, would you ever give an organization a citation? Mm -hmm. Might I think you might, um, as opposed to yeah. I mean, you want to basically you want to acknowledge praise a group, say um, you know, I don't know Craig's Doors. I don't know whatever. Just picking one off that's in my top of my head, mm -hmm. and it's not an individual, but you're you're or, or the board. Let's say you wanted to um, a, a praise the board. You have citation for their excellent service. Um, right, so th I, that's the only reason. Um, or an unusual, like, suppose there were a huge tornado and the survival center took all kinds of people in and fed them for four days or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, then as a town, we wanted to praise that action. Right, yeah. And that wouldn't necessarily fit into the other three. It's so not a proclamation for sure. It could be a resolution, and you could express, you know, opinion, we're really grateful, right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So the, the difference between the two is, is perhaps subtle one. Um, um, but I think the key idea of a citation is you actually, the, the whole point of it is to r recognize and praise. Right. Um, a commemoration is about something that, that's in the past, and a proclamation is basically just making something known, um, announcing something. Right. So if we're satisfied, those, those seem to me to be four um, things that we can do the real question and the tough one is um, what kind of policy do we want to put in writing or do we want to put one in writing related to these things? And in talking to Alyssa, my notes I'm looking at, um, she, you know, there are issues of free speech. Um, 
some practical points she made in terms of um, her experience. Um, be cautious or careful around um, political groups. Um, be, be conscious and aware of difference between local versus non-local. Um, always consider when we form or shape policy, when we create policy, um, its impact on local business. I think here, um, I'm not sure all of this is gonna be applicable to what we're looking at, but these were the kinds of points that she was making um, related to proclamations, resolutions, et cetera. Clarify them, define them, um, be cautious in any decisions you make, give yourself time to reflect, get public opinion, um, and I think in most cases that's, we've not done that, and maybe it's not possible. They tend to come, so far they seem to come all of a sudden, here they are. You've got a day, a week at the most. It's not as if you go around, right? So um, it may be that's just not gonna be relevant. Um, um, so that, those were her, from my notes, that's what I recall in our discussion. Um, I think the question for us is to what degree we really want to have um, specific specific policy. Must resolutions, proclamations, citations, and commemorations be presented to us X number of weeks in advance? Um, these kinds of things. That's where I don't have any real clear thoughts at the moment. When I worked on the recent Roe thing, uh, as a group we met for weeks, over, weeks, over a yeah. month, uh, but I notified Lynn as soon as we started working um, that there was gonna be a resolution um, and we talked about potential dates. It got actually got moved and stuff, which was fine. Um, so and I also think that there are times when if we set a time frame, that it, it would get in the way of something that was happening immediately. Say Lucio Perez is threatened by ICE mm -hmm. um, immediately soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what do we want to make a, a re I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, that's ne necessarily a good example, but it's like, I don't, I, putting that it has to be ready a month in advance. I'm working on another one right now for uh, Medicare for All, and we've been working for three months. Mm -hmm. So um, what does, why does the council need a month or it comes in the packet, you can read it, I don't know. So I, I think, I'm wondering. I think, hesitant to say this on camera, I think that it is wise to have a policy that tells people we need to get it within a certain time span, but also recognize that there will be times that we will break that policy. I mean, you shouldn't break policies, right? But sometimes, yeah. but this is, but it's, With both of those resolutions, I, I told Lynn that they were coming, and I thought this one would be ready in September. So what more notice? It, it, seriously, I'm not, I'm not judging. Well, it's, it's, it's not so much the notice. Well, so here's the thing. Yeah. So you told Lynn that, mm -hmm. but Lynn hasn't told me that, right, or anyone else that. And it's not so much about the notice to Lynn that it's coming, but the, about the actual text. So there's, there's, two, there's two parts to this, right? Well, now the text has to come to GOL. So, so right, so I was gonna say the first part is the text needs to be able to come to GOL in time. Mm -hmm. in, in an ideal situation, there should be two GOL meetings, right? Because, so for the, the ROW Act, we got it, we acted on it, it was very easy, right? But in theory, let's say, it's, it's easy, let's say there was something really problematic about it and we said, okay, we said to the sponsor, this needs to be fixed and bring it back to us, well then it wouldn't have been able to be acted on in the July 22nd meeting, right? Because right? it wouldn't have had another GOL meeting. So the, so the ideal situation is that you have two GOL meetings in between just in case, um, which would mean that we would need to get them at least like three weeks to a month in advance. The, t the text would need to be available. So here's a, here's a, a bypassing question, mm -hmm. because right now I could go to GOL, do uh, wording for the Medicare for All. Yeah, you right did. Now. 
It's in their packet. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> uh, right. yes, I did. Yeah, I, I sent it a little bit. But what I'm saying is that nobody on the council said that we had to go to DOL. So I didn't bring it to the council and say, I'm going to be making this resolution. And they said, well, that's a good idea or not a good idea, but you need to bring it to DOL. What's the process? Right. I mean, I gave instructions I knew it had to get here, but that's, did I bypass somebody? And, I, and I'm not being facetious. No, 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 that's a, <laughs> what's, um, So right now, the only thing that is automatically referred to GOL are bylaws. Mm -hmm. So in theory, anything that GOL looks at that is not a bylaw needs to be referred to GOL by the council. So it needs to go council, GOL. Right. The ROAC did not go through that because Lynn emailed me and Mandy Joe as president and said, I'm asking to you to do this um, because it, I think because you can do that right um, but I mean it's important for me or any council to be able to tell people who are asking me to do a resolution right what the process is so I don't have any problem with that there being a process but uh, I would like but it to be as simple and efficient as possible right. so if only bylaws need to come to um, to be recommended by the council I would be comfortable with something like, unless there is an emergency or something like that, a resolution must be uh, uh, given to DOL at a last or reduced to lunch before whatever. So it would need to go. To the it would need to go to the council, and then the council would refer to GOL. But, uh, but you just said. I think I think it I should be submitted to the council president, the council. and she. I'm thinking that um, resolutions are somewhat, wouldn't it come, they would be sent to the council president, right? And then she would, or he would then send them to GOL. Then they would come back to the council. As uh, a resolution, uh, well. Uh, uh, for the council then to, to deliberate and act upon. Um, it sounds like right now what you're saying is that it comes to the full council um, and what do we do? Well, it's just automatic. It goes to GOL, uh, or else it just comes to full council and we just talk about it and make a decision. We don't. We could just drop GOL. Um, it's also a question in my mind what our function is. Um, are we like a gatekeeper? Is our job to say, wait a minute? I mean, because I can imagine a situation where a resolution is. I mean, I, well, I can imagine it. I think it's unlikely to happen, but. Um, which says something uh, uh, very different. You know, say, say NRA comes to us and says, we want you to sponsor a resolution to, you know, for gun ownership in Amherst, because blah, blah. Um, and that's not gonna get anywhere, and it probably would never be, but the point is that where does something like that go? Um, it does, and if it comes to us, um, uh, we look at it and go, well, it's, it's, it's clear and consistent. <laughs> and what I, I, so, I, well, or, or is the role, is actionable also related to the idea of does this have anything to do with, uh, and there's where we get into that sticky issue that I said I didn't want to raise, because um, I often feel that these resolutions have absolutely nothing to do with what we actually do. They're just an expression of our opinion about something. And um, so I take it that's not what we're supposed to decide at the GOL. We're not supposed to have a debate about what's your view on X, Y, or Z. And so I didn't say anything about the resolution. I, you know, when the flag resolution came, I kept my mouth shut about my feelings about it. Um, did I really? I shouldn't have. <laughs> no, I mean I, we were just uh, in the in the council meeting. I did. Well, actually, it probably never. It never I, came to GOL, did it? Did it, it come did to GOL? Come to didn't come to GOL. No, no. Sure. Right, right. Well, the council meeting, no, because so that's where I have a chance to say what I think. Um, but um, help me here. Are you, 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 I would think it just goes to the council president, and then she just sends it to us. Um, but maybe that's a mistake. So, that, so right now, per our charge, because we haven't revised our charge yet, we review bylaws and resolutions. Now, of course, there have been many resolutions 
that have not gone to us, and that was, I think, just an oversight. But now we've been better about making sure resolutions come to us. Now, per the rules, how it gets to us. So bylaws are automatically referred. Nothing needs to happen. It goes to the president. It comes to us. Resolutions, it's less clear. So our rule 8.2F, the president may refer a measure to the appropriate co council committee uh, upon receipt if that measure is deemed to contain a minor request for action or is time limited. So for the row Act, in theory, that probably should have gone to the council and they say, okay, this gets referred to GOL. But I think because it was considered time limited or because she considered it a minor request, the president sent it to us and she's able to do that. Okay, so here we have the, what I was playing with the idea of um, let the, re the request because um, it seems to me that supporting something, uh, supporting a state um, bill mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is important. It is time, can be time limited, it yeah. cannot be. Yeah. Uh, I lost my train of thought in there, but um, could you go back and repeat what 8.2 says? 8.2 F says the president may refer a measure to the appropriate council committee upon receipt if that measure is deemed to contain a minor request for action or is time limited. And then let me add this one piece, because F1 is a minor request for action includes, but is not limited to, revisions that do not change policy. A minor request can, um, can be, when in a resolution, in some ways, I say we're gonna write a letter and send it to support your review mm -hmm. and encourage you to support mm -hmm. the press committee, that's a minor request. The issue may be larger, mm -hmm. and we discuss them, and we were frankly amazed that there was no opposition to our, our member yeah. over there. So, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I think, a re really, usually with a resolution, they're minor requests. And so yeah. I think we're telling to the president when we're sending <laughs> you know, if I, if I do a resolution, it goes to me, she looks at it, and she sends it to us. Yeah. Or she, you know, calls me up and says, you know, crazy, I'm not supposed, I'm not doing something about the NRA or whatever. But, or, so I don't know. I just want to keep so it simple. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I think the rules as and evident. I don't have any more coming up, David. Well, no, but it, it's not, again, it's not the content that I'm, we're, we're wrestling with now. We, that comes later, perhaps. But it seems what Evan has just read would certainly allow what I envision, which is any kind of resolution or, or citation or come up blah, 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 is a minor matter. Not, not the content in the sense, but that act, the, asking the council to do this is a minor matter that she would uh, naturally just shoot to us um, without having to do anything, just like a bylaw. Um, and then we get into the question that we can't discuss today because we don't have time, I don't think, is what are we supposed to do with these things? Um, and the answer may be very simple. Um, I'm not sure, I, we need to talk about it. Um, but I think the way the rules are written right now um, allows the president just automatically to refer these to us. And, the, and I mean, one could argue that, yeah, So I think I, I agree like 90%. <laughs> I do think that there are, and I think that this would be at the discretion of the president, I do think there are potentially resolutions that could be seen as less minor. Um, so the one that comes to mind to me is the one that was passed by town meeting, the 100% renewable energy, right? That was sort of committing our entire town to something, right? To me, that's less minor than we support this piece of legislation, send this to Joe Comerford, right? I think that there can be expressions of opinions by the council that are less minor. He, he, here, here's my, here's my concern. Wouldn't that, put, according to the charter as it exists now, the president would bring her the, would, to the council? Yeah, I mean, we, we give her some discretion. So I guess, to me, the proper process is they send it to the president, she sends it to us. Right. Of course, we could also amend the rules to say, 
bylaws, resolutions, proclamations are automatically referred mm -hmm. to GOL. Yeah. Right now, just bylaws are, but technically anything within our purview could be automatically referred right. in the same way that anything that has to do with financial expenditures right. or bar and goes to the finance committee automatically. It doesn't call out exactly what they have to be. Right. Um, that could be a rules change. Uh, my one, my one, the one, so there's two pieces of having them in advance, right? One is making sure GOL has enough time to act. Yeah. The other is also making sure that people are aware of it. Like, you were surprised that there was no opposition, oh, was, no, right? Because, at, as part of the creation of that resolution, we had op-ed pieces, mm -hmm. we had um, information in the paper, so there was a lot of publicity right. that this was going to be happening. So that might not always be, the, and, and I also want to, I want to come clean and say, I am saying that we need these to come in advance as someone who sent in the LGBT pride oh, proclamation no, no, no. the no. Thursday before the Monday meeting. So I, I want to, I will recognize my hypocrisy here. Well, but, I, I think the policy we'll read should be um, right. not must. Um, we're going to have to recognize that these things are going to happen like this. And so we're asking people right. to please submit X number of weeks, knowing that full well that, that that may never happen. And if it doesn't happen, we're not going to, I don't think we want to be in the position of saying, well, sorry, you, you didn't make the deadline. <laughs> so right. come, you know. Um, I mean, I, I think that because we're expressing from the community, we're very important. Yeah. Um, so I want to, it is 1220, I know George has to I, leave. I do so need I, to go. And yeah. I think that this is a bigger discussion that we can finish. I do want to just try to take care of our minutes from our July 10th meeting, if, if George, if you'll Absolutely. give me in that. So we have minutes that were written by Mandy Joe. They've been uh, in our packet uh, for like two weeks. Um, I move that we accept the minutes as written. So Pat has made a motion to accept the minutes of July 10th as written. I will second that. Is there any discussion? Then all of those in favor? All right, unanimous. No, it's okay. No, I'll second. All right, so with that, I will adjourn us at 1221 p.m.